Good to see you again. Good morning. It's good to be on. Hello. Uh, it's good to see you as well. Um, so on labor force participation, are we just going to stay here in this range? Or at what point do we have to call a spade a spade? Well, we have to call a spade a spade in terms of what's happened. It's clearly been a disappointment. And a, a lot more of the job gains that we've seen, and these were obviously pretty strong job gains after the last couple of disappointments, have gone into bringing down the unemployment rate and a lot less has translated into increases in participation. So all else equal, I think that means, you know, while employment growth has not been, you know, massively above expectations in, uh, in the last six months or so, I, I think there is more tightness than I think most people had anticipated. So and then how does that follow through to what we might expect from the Fed? I think it's one factor that is probably going to get them to, you know, hike somewhat earlier than maybe six months ago seemed likely. And that's the reason why we pulled forward our projections for liftoff. We were in 2023. Now we're in July 2022, right after the conclusion of the taper. And labor supply issues are an important an important driver here. The other important driver, of course, is what we're seeing just in terms of goods demand and goods inflation, which I think is going to spill more into 2022, as Chair Powell uh, discussed in the press conference on Wednesday. Jan, crazy question here. Um, but if we continue to see inflation persist, maybe not be as transitory as was once believed. Um, we keep hearing about the incredible spending power and savings uh, of the American consumer. But if you see higher prices lasting longer, could that potentially pull more people back into the labor market? Uh, I think, you know, there's a good case for seeing a boost from pent up savings. And I think it's still ahead of us. If you look at the September personal saving rate it was 7.5%, which is basically the pre-pandemic level, meaning that, at least in aggregate, households aren't really cutting into their pent-up savings yet. And I think that's going to, you know, give a, a boost to spending. Consumption could still stay pretty strong. I think right now there are some signs, as, as, as Steve Leesman noted, that the economy is accelerating. Uh, and, you know, with that, yeah, I think you can pull more people in. Ultimately, labor demand is an important driver of the employment fluctuations. And, and I think this is one of, the, one of the reasons why demand should be pretty strong.